What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Mustard Seed message. My name is Sean. I pray that you're blessed and I also ask that you would like, share, and subscribe if you are blessed by this video. Just to share the love, share the news, and increase the awareness of what we're doing here at the Mustard Seed. Happy Easter. This is a, a good day. This is a day of, of celebration. This is the stone rolling day. Let's get into the story of the resurrection. But before getting there, let's set the scene. Would you put yourself into this story? Jesus Christ teaches profound wisdom from heaven. He throws down miracles like the earth has never seen before. Then he's betrayed by one of his disciples for money and handed over to the Jewish authorities who were jealous of his authority, his teaching, his miracles. And all of his disciples are too afraid to confront the situation and they all run away from him. And then later, after the Jewish authorities beat him and lie about him, he's handed over to the Roman authorities who are more interested in pleasing man than they are to please God. And they crucify him on the cross, a very gruesome and uncomfortable, even to think about kind of death, which is prophesied about in Psalm 22. And this is what the prophecy of this crucifixion looks like. In verse 14, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. It's harsh death on the cross is what Jesus Christ suffered, but it wasn't for naught. Every bit of blood was shed for a purpose. In Isaiah 53, four to five, it is prophesied, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. And Jesus suffers for this reason of salvation for our souls. And as he is on the cross, he proclaims it is finished. And he gives his life over for the sacrifice of our sins, for our sins. He dies for us for our redemption. He pays the price for us, for our sins. And that's the context of the thing that we were about to jump into, the resurrection. We'll see you very sh shortly. We're going to worship one worship song and pray and just dig deep into the Lord. And we'll get right back to the sermon. See you soon. you 
listening to before was how Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sin and he gave up his spirit now the story continues this rich man Joseph buys a tomb for Jesus on the side of a mountain and this great stone is rolled in front of the tomb three days after Jesus death Mary Magdalene and what the Bible says is the other Mary, go to visit this tomb. As they approach the tomb, the earth starts to shake. And what the Bible says is there is a great earthquake. And what we're talking about isn't a 3.5 Vancouver Island earthquake that you sleep through and you can live your entire life here and not even realize that there's earthquakes that happen. No, this thing was out of control. It was shaking violently and there was nothing that anybody could do to stop it. You can't reach down to the ground and stop the earth from shaking as the earthquake rumbles on. This is above. This is something completely out of man's control. And this is why the fingerprint of God in the Old Testament is often referred to as an earthquake because it is above us. It is not within our hands to stop. And this power that is shaking the tectonic plates of the planet is Jesus Christ being resurrected. He has risen. Cathedrals with massive arcs and beautiful, inspiring architecture and orchestras singing with passion to fill those spaces have not come close to replicating the awe and the magnitude of this moment. At the tomb there's guards there. These guards were mocking Jesus making fun of Jesus, cracking jokes about Jesus as they were guarding this tomb. Now, after the earthquake, they are saying, truly, this person was the Son 
of God. The power of the resurrection to be around and experience in that moment, the power of the resurrection was enough to cause the unbeliever to start to believe. It was the conversion of the unbeliever to the person of faith who professes in Jesus Christ's name. The next thing that happens is an angel falls down from heaven, shining white as snow. He rolls the stone away. And in this moment, now the guards are flat on their faces with veneration in absolute awe. And the irony is that they thought that they were guarding a dead man. But in the moment that they realized that Jesus now was alive, now they became like dead men laying prostrate, flat on their faces. Now the angel sitting on the rock that he just rolled away. And he looks at the Marys and he says, don't you remember? Don't you know? Jesus told you that he was going to do these things. That's like, wow. It's like, wow. Can you put yourself in that story? Can you imagine what's taking place? Can you experience this resurrection power as we hear the story of the earth shaking, an angel appearing, the stone rolling away, and realizing that Jesus was dead and now he is alive? He has risen. And there's nothing that man can do to stop him. Can you put yourself in the story? Can you experience it? What are you feeling? What are you seeing as you hear this story? The two Marys walk away absolutely bewildered in what the Bible says in fear and in joy in fear after experiencing the terrifying, awe-striking power of God in the resurrection, and in joy and the ramifications realizing that Jesus Christ is alive. Now as they're leaving, who else appears to them other than Jesus Christ? himself and there's movies with these huge instrumental bands that are trying to inspire emotion in the flicks but there is nothing that could possibly compare to the moment after seeing Jesus rise from the dead in this moment the Marys they know that Jesus Christ is not just a good man. He is not just a prophet sent by God. That Jesus Christ is God. He defeated the grave. He defeated death. He is greater than a man. He is greater than us. And the only thing that was appropriate, the only thing that made sense in that moment was to fall at Jesus Christ's feet and start to worship him. Do you feel the gravity of this moment? Do you sense the awe? We don't offer just a polite, hello, how are you doing to Jesus who had just defeated the grave in this moment. The only reasonable thing is to give our entire lives in worship it's to fall at his feet and recognize him for who he is. This is the power of the resurrection. Can you put yourself in this story? Can you put yourself at the feet of Jesus? Jesus now tells the Marys, go. Tell my disciples what just happened. And so, 
They go to the disciples and they tell them what happened. And they're like, no, 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 that didn't happen. Quit your idle chatter, you women. You have nothing good to say. We don't believe you. What have you been smoking? Nothing that you could have possibly have said could be true because that is absolutely unbelievable. The way our adult brain works is in something called a crystallized intelligence where everything that we learn from now on as being an adult will be associated to the things that we once learned. And we find it impossible to create a new, a new concept without relating it to an old one. Friends, the disciples just did not have a box for the resurrection. They just couldn't picture that to be true. So they didn't believe. In the same way unbelievers in Jesus Christ, they, they haven't experienced something that would give them the ability to believe because they just don't have a box for that. Friends, there's nothing intellectual in the entire universe that could possibly prepare us for the resurrection. And that's kind of the point. That is the point. That it's not supposed to be something that intellectually stimulates us and is rational. In the same way, as earthquakes shake the planet, we can't stop them from shaking. We can't grab onto the earthquake and control it. It's not supposed to have a box. It's supposed to be above us. It's not meant to be in our hands to control and manipulate in however we deem fit. Friends, I don't want to worship a God that can fit in my three-pound brain. I don't want to worship a God that makes complete and 100% sense to me, that I can just figure out everything that he does. Because at that point, I'm equal with him. And that's not a God that I worship at all. Do you remember when you were kids looking up into the stars and imagining what's out there and just experiencing that mystery, that awe, oh, that depth of I don't know what's happening out there. Have you ever looked at pictures of the Hubble telescope of universes and just been blown away and you feel that, that stretch in your minds like, how, what, why, where, oh my goodness, what's going on out there? That, that awe, ah, that's Jesus. That's the resurrection. It's not meant to be mathematically figured out. It's meant to cause us to fall to our faces in worship and honor God for who he is bigger than us. It's meant to be a mystery. It's not meant to have a box. It's above us. And when we believe for God and in the resurrection, when we believe in him for the things that we don't understand, we will allow him to do things in our lives that we don't understand. The same power that shook the earth that day is still available for us even right now. As we profess Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, and we declare him as our Lord and our Savior, and we believe in our hearts that he died and rose from the grave three 
days later, that resurrection, awe-striking, mysterious power will be available for us. Would you put yourself in this story? Would you experience the earth shaking? Would you see the angel appearing? Would you look into that grave and see a risen Jesus Christ? Experience that power and worship. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.